little bit smaller. Amen. So at this time, we're going to be, like we said, we're going to be led in prayer by Evangelist Boone, followed by Scripture by Deacon Thomas, and Affirmation of Faith by Deacon Jordan. Let's say amen in that order, please. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we come before you this morning, Lord, just saying thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, because you've been so good to us, God. Thank you because you're God and God all by yourself. Lord, there is none like you, not in all the earth, oh God. And we say thank you. Praises be to your name. Glory and honor be to your name, oh God. We just thank you this morning, oh God. And Lord, as we come before you this morning, Lord, we just ask you, oh God, to, to look upon those who are in the service on this morning, Father God. Meet them where they are, oh God. Oh God, meet them where they are, oh God. For we've come, Lord, we've joined together, oh God, to bless your holy name. Lord, we just ask you right now, God, to meet us right where we are. And God, we ask you to look upon those families, Lord, who may be yet on their way, Lord. Bring them in safely, oh God, and one accord, minds and hearts, God, turn towards you. And Father, we ask you, Lord, to look upon the bereaved families, oh God, the family of Mother Branch, oh God, and the loss of her brother, oh God, the family of Sister Marilyn, oh God, and the loss of her husband, oh God. Father, we just ask you right now, Lord, to comfort them, oh God, as only you can, Lord. Provide that strength for them that they need, God, in this hour, Lord. Let the peace, your peace, God, that passes all understanding, Lord, be theirs, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for each and every family represented here, Father God. Those, Lord, who are in the hospitals, oh God, those in the nursing homes, Lord, those in the prisons, oh God, we just ask you right now, God, send your word. Send your word to heal their diseases, oh God. Send them your word, Lord, to set them free, oh God. Send them your word, oh God, to let them know, Lord, that they are loved, that you love them, oh God, and that you are the true and the everlasting God. And we say thank you, oh God. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're going to do in this place on today, Lord. Thank you for your presence in the midst of your people today. And Lord, we say have your way, God. Have your way in this place, God. Have your way in our lives, oh God. Lord, we surrender, God. We surrender, we submit to your will and to your way, oh God. Have your way in our lives today, God. We love you today, God. And we're here to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise that it's due, oh God. We thank you and we praise you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. salvation. We 
We affirm our faith in Jesus Christ. We affirm our faith in the Holy Spirit. We affirm our faith in sanctification. We believe in the sanctified power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. She did teach us all. 
I can praise the Lord. Yeah. You know, and I thank God for that. I thank the Lord for just all the things that he's done for me. I thank him for the many blessings that he bestows upon my, me and my family. You know, I was walking into my dad's room and I happened to see the picture, which made me, you know, think about it, of Mary and I and our mom right behind us. You know, even though I don't have my mother physically behind us, but I do have God. And that's one thing that I thank God for. You know, he truly is a good God. He keeps on blessing and he keeps on doing great things for us. So even though you can look at, if you want to, the enemy will keep you looking down on what you don't have. But God says, look up and look at what you do have. So brethren, it may not be a whole lot thank you for the little that you have and move on. And I thank God for that. Testimony. Has God been good to anyone today? Amen. You can tell me if God does something for you, you ought to what? Amen. Yes, sister. I just want to say, yesterday we were fishing, and we had like a really great time, me, Brother Warren, and the pastor, and all. So they left me. They went down on the other end by the bridge, and I was sitting by myself. I'm like, hey, you guys, you guys are taking a bait with you. So I had to run down, grab me, come back and sit by myself. And so when they were down there sitting in the heat, I was down there catching all the fish. And I'm like yelling and calling and calling, like, hey, answer the phone. I got all these fish in my boat. Nobody was answering the phone. So I had to take them off by myself. And I caught seven fish, and they didn't catch any. Sometimes it's not what she expects, but 
when she gets there, she still tells them, if you do know that's the truth, God has something for each and every one of us to do. It may not even be what we like doing or what we want to do, but when God gives you something to do, do you know you have to do it? I thoroughly enjoyed all the presenters on yesterday. Just a wonderful service. Not a whole, whole lot of people, but just a good fellowship. And to see people go forth that you don't always see. And uh, our state supervisor had some wonderful people doing the presentations, and they just did an outstanding job. And I think Sister Faye is so pretty, and I'm glad to see her here today. <laughs> That's a total surprise, but I'm just glad to see her. I'm just glad to be here myself. And you know what, Saints? I'm glad to be saved. I can thank God to say I'm glad to be in the number. 
I thank Amen. God that he allowed us to come over the highways. I thank God for a restful sleep. I thank God for how he protected me from hurt, harm, or danger, seen and unseen. I always say he didn't let no robbers or thieves try to enter into my home. No fires consumed me, but he kept me covered by the blood. Yeah. And for that, I'm grateful. I thank God that I had a, a different flyer mother <laughs> that was given out, so I had a different time. But God knows what he wants his people to hear. And I thank God that she catched a hold of that. I thank God I know I'm on an assignment, Missionary Boone, and I can't stop. I will not be defeated. I will not be denied. And I will not be delayed. People say I'm delayed, but not denied. But you're not delayed because God has his own time. His time is not ours. I thank God for Mother Marshall uh, leading us over here. I just thank God I meant to talk to Missionary Boone yesterday and let her know we were going to come. But we have was having such a good fellowship. And I love the saints, you all. I thank God that I am saved. I said that before, but I really do thank God that I am saved. I thank God that I'm free from sin. I don't have a mind to do anything but the will of the Lord. And I just thank God for the saints of God, the real saints. I'm talking the real saints. The real saints, the ones that you know they're going to pray. When everything else fails, just pray. Because God will come through. I'm just excited about the Lord. I'm excited about what he is doing. For those of you that do not know me, I am Missionary Francis Neighbor. I am the Iowa Jurisdiction Missions President. And I am available to you. I think pretty much everybody knows my number. If you don't find somebody, they'll give it to you. But I wanted to come. I have not been here in that capacity. So I wanted to show my face. A lot of you know me in other areas, but I love Michigan where I am on assignment, so like you said, every day. I look for something to do. Do we really look to go see, do what God told us to do? He gave us the Great Commission. Do we really go look for that? So I look for something to do something for the Lord every day. And when I don't miss your boom, I said, well, did what? Was I out of line, Lord, or was it not my day, or what was going on? Because every day, God will give you something to do. You're looking for something big, it may just be a smile. It may be just something in the older man when we were having our breakfast, older gentleman, he said, you look so lovely. And I wasn't feeling the best. And I was like, you don't get that from an older men. You used to get it from ladies that'll say you look nice. But he was an older gentleman. And I said, well, Lord, and I smiled at him. I had to muster it up because I wasn't feeling well, mother. But I said, well, thank you. And God bless you. And here come another man. And he said, do you got Jesus in your heart? Oh, that perked me up, Missionary Boone. I said, oh, yes, I do. I love Jesus. It reminded me that God is still moving. And he is everywhere. I would desire you all to pray for me. I desire that you all continue to cover me with your prayers as I go out to do the will of the Lord. Because these are the lasting evil days. And the enemy wants to destroy God's people. But we've already won, y'all. We've already won. The victory has already been won. Please pray for me and my family. And I bid you well. God bless Pastor Boone and all of the saints of God, all of the mothers. I love the mothers, y'all. I love all. And this mother, she don't care where she see me at. She going to catch my hand and encourage me and tell me how wonderful I look. But I know she prayed for me. I can feel it when she grabbed my hand. So you keep on praying for me. I thank God for seeing the young sisters. Y'all just keep on keeping on knowing that God has an assignment for you on today. testimonies we had today. Amen. We thank God for the missionary being here this morning, this afternoon, but I can promise you that you have a Church of God in Christ title, but I'm going to tell you, all of us should be doing mission work. Amen. Amen. We all should be doing some kind of mission work each and every day. You may not have that time, but you should be able to go out and do something for somebody. Take some, some groceries to somebody. Cut somebody's grass. Something you can do. Don't, don't let the title, because someone has that title of jurisdiction, that it's only meant for them. They're just leading by example. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, are there any other testimonies before we get ready to take up another notch? Because we're now we're getting ready to have some praise and worship. I love y'all. 
Ooh. You want to know I love music. And, uh, they, they get to sing good enough. I might you know what I might do. I might run around this church today. Amen. Amen. Praise the worship service.
be praised. Sometimes. All the time. All the time, amen. We thank God for our praise team. And I'm just sitting here looking at our young people. They are just really getting into this music. And they play so skillfully to be so young, amen. So we should encourage our young people to keep coming, amen. Amen. Keep playing skillfully. I enjoy y'all. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to actually have an official welcome now uh, by our own Evangelist Boom. Let's give her a good God bless you. So I'm just so happy that I can come to the house of the Lord and praise the Lord. Now others, they say, stay home, watch it online. But it's nothing like gathering with the people of God. And I thank God for it. And thank you all so much for your love. God for the Church of God in Christ 
in Iowa and the family that he has made us to be. And any time that you're in Davenport, feel free to come on out to Mount Olive and get some, some good praise and worship and some, and some love. Because we love you, we thank God for you, and we, we're used to seeing your faces on the other end, but it's good to see your faces on this end. So we just give God thanks and praise for you all being with us here today. And so we're just going to continue in the Lord. Is anybody enjoying the Lord today? Enjoying the Lord and His goodness. Just the opportunity to praise Him, to lift our hands, to lift our voices. Because you can't do that everywhere. You can't do that everywhere. Try doing it on your job. See what happens. We can't do it everywhere. So this is God's house. So we can praise Him. We can shout unto God. We can give Him all the glory. We can say hallelujah. We can dance if we want to. We can run if we want to. But we can give our God the praise that is due His name. Hallelujah. So we thank God and turn back into the hands of the giver. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. church this afternoon, our young people will have their choir rehearsal. Uh, so those who have young people, let them come be a part of the choir because we know they go for them for Sunday. So right after church, be a youth choir rehearsal. Amen. Amen. Are there any other announcements I don't have before me? Yes, I have one announcement. I have one announcement. Just one announcement I'd like to make. We do have tickets available for the benefit luncheon that will follow the 10-year the celebration for Mother Beats and the Women's Conference this year. So we do have those tickets available, $50 per ticket. Please see me and I can get a ticket reserved for you and we can trans, transact the monies maybe uh, at a later date, but we do have the tickets available, $50 per ticket. Oh no, it's, it's a busy time right now, amen? Busy time. We know we're getting ready for the Holy Convocation in Memphis. So we know a lot of things going on. So we just had our Holy Convocation. We're still praying for the Bishop Johnson, Bishop Epright, and everyone, amen. Praying for the jurisdiction. So this time, unless there's any other announcements, we're going to go farther into our service. Pretty soon we're going to be fed the bread of life, amen. amen. I love good food. I love good preaching. So that's a good combination. Because we're going to be fed with the word of God today. Following the uh, selection by the choir. We're going, to go, we're going to have the introduction of the speaker first. Excuse me. And after that, that will be done by Elder Broyles. Following the uh, introduction of the speaker, we'll have a selection by the choir. And the next voice after that, we'll ask you to stand to your feet to, to receive the speaker of the hour. Let's say amen. Amen. Man, I'm going to introduce our pastor this morning. He's a man that uh, loved God. <clears throat> he's a man that loves his wife. And he's a man that loves people. And he's a man, I believe, lives what he preach about. And he's a man that's willing to work. Yeah. Uh, you should have seen him work here a couple of weeks ago on Saturday. He's here just sweating and everything, running the back and cleaning, doing this and that. But anyway, he's the man who made the word today. And we know that it's the word that's going to save us. It's the word that's going to convict the hearts. Amen. It's the word that will last into eternity. Amen. 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 And after the you hear the choir, we'll ask you to rest of your feet and read the and receive the path of this great church from out of the church of God in Christ, Alvin Cornelius E. Bull. Amen.
Gracious and eternal Father, we come, dear God, giving you thanks. Thanks for this day, dear God, that you have blessed us to see, dear God. We thank you, dear God, for you allowing us to come to your house one more time, dear God, to worship you in spirit and in truth, dear God. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and for the plan of salvation, dear God. God, we thank you today, dear God, that we can declare, dear God, that we are saved and filled with your Holy Spirit, dear God. And God, we give you thanks, dear God. Now, God, you know, dear God, even in our presence, dear God, there are those, dear God, heavens are hard, dear God, because sickness and loved ones, dear God. And Jesus, you told us in the word that you took those stripes for our healing. We pray for loved ones this morning for healing. We know, God, that there is nothing too hard for you, dear God. And God, we believe in you for a miracle, dear God. And God, we give you thanks for it, dear God. We give you thanks, dear God. And we pray that your will will be done in every situation, dear God. And God, we say thank you. For those that are in our bereavement, dear God, God, we ask him for mercy. We ask him for peace. We ask him for comfort, dear God. And God, we say thank you. Now, dear God, I ask you that you would allow me to decrease and that you would increase and that your people will see your son, Jesus. We will forever give you the glory. In your son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of of the Lord. Amen. I truly thank God for this day. This day that the Lord has made. You always hear me say that, amen, because I'm truly thankful, amen, for the day that God has made and that each and every morning that God wakes me up, amen, I thank God for it, amen. And I don't know about you, amen, Many times I think about how good God has been to me, amen. How good God has been to me, amen, because we serve a good God. Even in this time with all this stuff going on, do you know God is still good? God is still good, amen. And he's worthy to be praised. Yes, he's worthy to be praised. And I thank God for it, amen. I try each and every day of my life to give God thanks, amen, to give him thanks. I don't wait to come to the church and give him thanks, amen. I try to do it every day, amen, and as often as he laid on my heart, amen, I try to give him thanks, amen, thanks, amen. I don't care what I'm going through, amen, whether I'm in the valley or whether I'm on the hilltop, amen, I give him thanks, amen. I give him thanks because he's worthy, amen. And that's the attitude God wants you and I to have in this day and hour, amen. He wants us to be able to give him thanks, amen. No matter where we are, amen. No matter what condition, amen, we are in, he wants us to be able to give him thanks, amen. Because he is worthy, amen. God is worthy, amen. And I thank God this morning, amen, for being saved. Amen. For just being saved and filled with his Holy Spirit. Amen. As we used to say in the old church, amen. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. But now, amen, they try to, you know, we got a little politically correct and we got, amen, we don't want to offend people. So we will say, oh, Holy Spirit, amen. But we have to be believing like over there in Acts, the second chapter. Amen. And over there in the first chapter where God told him, amen, Jesus, when he was getting ready to depart, he told him, amen, that he was going to send back, amen, the Holy Ghost, amen, because they needed some power, amen. So we still have to let people know, amen, we're filled with the Holy Ghost. It's okay if you call it the Holy Spirit, amen, but every now and then, amen, we need to let people know, amen, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God. Amen. We're not going to, amen, act up today. Amen. Because, 
Amen. We get excited. Amen. I just believe God is doing some great things in this hour. Amen. And even this morning, amen, I want to thank God for each and every one of you that's here, amen. We thank God for Mother Marsh, amen. We thank God, amen, for, amen. We know, amen, she wear a title, dish the missionary, amen. But, amen, she's a mother first, amen. She's a mother first, amen. I think she said she got quite a few children, amen. <laughs> amen. And I thank God for, amen, and thank God, amen, for, amen, those women, amen, in the jurisdiction, amen, who came down to visit us, amen. We just thank God for your fellowship today, amen. And we're going to be coming from a familiar passage of scripture, amen. I almost felt like I didn't even have to preach today, Mother Griffin, because Mother Griffin was in my message for Sunday school, amen. Missionary neighbor, she get in the message, amen. I'm like, hey, do I really have to even preach today? Amen. But I believe, amen, God is calling us, amen, for this hour, amen. So if you would turn your Bibles to Judges, the seventh chapter. And I'm going to have Evangelist Boone. She's going to read from verses 1 down to about 15, amen, even though we're going to talk about Amen. Other scriptures over there. Amen. I'm going to have a read. Amen. From verse 1 down to 15. And even before she began to read. Amen. I'm going to ask a question. And normally I don't do this right here. But I'm going to ask you. To show hands of those who believe that God has a work for you to do in this hour. Can you show me your hands if you believe God has a work for you to do in this hour? Hey, amen. I think I see all hands raised in the air. Amen. And if not, amen, you should have raised your hand. Amen. Because I believe God has chosen us for this hour. As difficult as things are going on around us, amen, I believe God has chosen us in this hour. And I know, I know, amen, when we look at the church, some of us, we get disappointed because we don't see all the saints, amen, since COVID, they haven't returned back, amen. Amen. Some of us, amen, are struggling just to, amen, have someone come down and listen to the message, amen. But do you know God is still in control? God still has a work for you and I to do. Amen. And I heard missionary neighbors talk about it. Amen. She wake up in the morning. Amen. Thinking about what work can she do for the Lord. Amen. So we're going to ask Evangelist Boone. Amen. At this time, if she would just read those scriptures for us. Judges chapter 7 verses 1 through 15. Then Jerubal, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Moray in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel bump themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now therefore go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people 20 and 2,000, and there remained 10,000. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee, and it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee, and of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, 
were 300 men, mm -hmm. but all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the 300 men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go, every man, unto his place. So the people took vittles in their hands and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel, every man, unto his tent, and retained those 300 men. And the host of the Midian was, was beneath him in the valley. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it unto thine hand. But if thou fear to go down, go thou with Pura, thy servant, down to the host, and thou shalt hear what they say, and afterward shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then went he down with Pura, his servant, unto the outside of the arm. Then went he down with Pura, his servant, unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. And the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east lay along the valley like grasshoppers for multitude. And their camels were without number as they sand by the sea side for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the host of Midian and came unto a tent and smote it that it fell, and to overturn it that the tent lay long. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel, for into his hand hath God delivered Midian and all the host. And it was so, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, that he worshipped and returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hands the host of Midian. May the Lord bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Amen. We truly thank God for his word. Amen. And God has given us a theme this morning. What it takes to do the work of the Lord. This is why I ask you, amen, do you, amen, anyone in here, do you believe you are called are chosen at this time to do a work for the Lord. Because we're going to take some time and we're going to examine this passage of scripture here, amen. But I must remind all of us, amen, that our time is limited to do work for the Lord. The Bible tells us, amen, nighttime coming when none of us can work. But not only that, amen, it also tells us, amen, that there's no work in the grave, whether thy go it. Mm -hmm. Amen. So you and I, amen, we have to understand that God has chosen you and I for a time just like this. Amen. We have been chosen for a time just like this. The Bible said many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. If you believe you are chosen, amen, I need you to tell God right now, I said, thank you, God, for choosing me. Hallelujah. Because I believe, amen, I am chosen for a time just like this, amen. I don't care how difficult it get, amen. I believe that I have been chosen for a time just like this. Amen. And I have to be honest with you, amen, when it comes to doing work for the Lord, amen. I have to be honest. Sometimes God asks us to do things which seem to be bigger than what we are capable of having. When we think about Gideon, amen, the task that God just gave Gideon was too big for Gideon to handle, amen. It seemed almost impossible for Gideon to handle, amen, because the Bible tells us over in verse over there in chapter 6, that Gideon was minding his own business, just thrusting weak by the lion prince, trying to hide from the Midianites. And all of a sudden, God would send an angel unto him and say unto him, the Lord is with thee. 
that mighty man of valor. How you gonna call me a mighty man of valor? And right now I am in captivity. Don't you see me hiding out? Amen. Don't you see me hiding out and everything? Just, amen, just to try. Amen, to just have something. Amen, I'm hiding from the midnight. And then the angel goes on to tell him, say, go in this thy might. And thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianite. Have not I sent thee? So yes, I'm being honest with you. Sometimes God asks us to do things that are much bigger than you and I can imagine. Amen. Sometimes, amen, if we be honest with ourselves, amen, sometimes we feel like God should have chosen someone else to do it. You ever been there? I've been there. Amen. When I start thinking in myself, amen, God called me to do something, amen, sometimes I begin to say, God, you should have chosen someone else, amen, with more experience, amen. Somebody, amen, that's much smarter than little bitty me, amen. Somebody, amen, who know more scriptures than me, God. Somebody who has been saved longer than me. You been there? Have you been there? And God has asked you to do it, amen. And I just feel, I say, God, now I know you could ask somebody else, amen. Somebody, amen, who speaks better than me. And when it comes to the church of God in Christ, amen, God, I know you could ask somebody, amen, who have much more knowledge of the church protocol. Amen, because guess what? I thank God I have some knowledge of it, amen. But I'm one of those ones, amen, that I just believe, amen, that we serve a God, amen, that's Abe, amen. And I believe, amen, sometimes, amen, we put so much format and so much things, amen, that the people can't get delivered, amen, because we so hung up on protocol, we so hung up on all these things, amen. And sometimes we forget that Jesus died for the church. He didn't die for protocol. And I understand, amen, the Bible tells us we got to do things in decent and order, amen. But when I got saved, amen, they told me that we was a Holy Ghost church, amen. They told me we were led by the Spirit, amen. And they told me, amen, you may have a program, but when the Spirit of the Lord come in, you ignore the program. But now we're living in a highway, amen. If the other boom, amen, don't put his cross. Amen. In the right place. Amen. Somebody gonna get on that. Amen. And I'm saying, amen. What about amen? There's so out there that need to be seen. Hallelujah. But see, God has chosen you and I for this time. How do I know God has chosen you and I? Oh, and Peter, amen. First Peter, amen. You and I, we have to remember this. If you are saved in your field with the Holy Ghost, God said, but ye are a chosen generation. When they tell me that I'm a chosen generation, Mother Griff, that let me know for this season, this time, I don't care how bad things are going, amen, God has chosen me. God has chosen you. And we may not understand everything because Gideon didn't understand, amen, when the angel appeared unto him, amen. And he was out there, look, minding his own business. But look, we are a chosen generation, a raw priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Hallelujah. So when I begin to look at this passage of scripture, amen, I wanted to know, amen, so you and I will be able, amen, to get out there on the mission field, amen. We'll be out there, amen, to do the thing that God is calling us to do, amen. We have to understand that God has a work for us to do. And when I looked at getting in life, amen, and I began to examine the scripture, amen, I noticed something, amen. Gideon wasn't the wealthiest person there. What am I trying to say, amen? See, I'm finna mess us up in the church of God and Christ, amen. I'm finna mess us up, amen, because guess what? You don't have to be the wealthiest or you don't have to be the richest, amen. You don't have to be the one, amen, to pay all your dues. That's what I'm trying to take. All of your reports, amen. If God got a work for you to do, you need to be finding yourself doing it. Even if you can't afford the reports, amen, you still need to be doing the work. 
And see, I was going to ignore this one right here, amen. But God let me know, said, look at Gideon, amen. Gideon didn't have much, amen, but I'm going to use Gideon. Amen, and we have to look at this day and hour. We got many people sitting in the church, sitting in the church that God has chosen and called them for work in this season and hour. But because of the financial burden, amen, when he had told us when he has saved us, amen, we are free indeed, amen. I'm free indeed. Don't you put me in bondage, amen, because of my pocketbook or because of my, look, my bill falling, me, my checking account. Don't you put me in bondage, amen, because God has called me. He has chosen me. See, and that's what we got. Because who's missing out on it? You know who's missing out on it? It's the us. It's us. The church is missing out on what God has called and what God want to give to the church. But because of all this stuff we have added, amen, people can't even be set free. There's somebody that got a testimony, somebody that needs to be talking, amen, that can deliver and set people free for what God has done for them, amen. But because... They don't have a title, amen, because they refuse to get a title because they say, guess what? In order to hold a title, amen, you got to be able to what? Pay those reports. Hallelujah. But see, we got to get this thing right. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get it right because look at the church, amen, and I believe my Bible said God said that he wanted his house to be what? Feel. Hallelujah. If we look at what's going on in the world, we in the church should be concerned, amen. Look how many people, amen, is leaving this world. And many of them are leaving this world and they're going into Christless grave. In other words, amen, they're going to a place that was not prepared for them. Because my Bible tells me that hell was prepared for Satan and the fallen angel. It wasn't prepared for us. But many. And God is saying, amen. I got to work for you to do. You ain't got to be the wealthiest. Amen. And some of us, amen, we shouldn't even want to be wealthy. Why you shouldn't even want to be wealthy, amen? I'm going to tell you why you shouldn't want to be wealthy, amen. Look what he said about the rich man. He said that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of God. Amen. He said it's easy for the camera to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. That's not saying that rich people can't make it because Jesus went on down to let them know. I'm not saying that a rich man can't make it, but I'm letting you know it's difficult for him to make it. Amen. Because see, the Bible tells us money answer all things down here. So when you got money to do whatever you want to do down here, many times you don't go to God. Amen. You try to handle everything on your own. But he tells them, see, see it's, it may be difficult for us, mother, but he said with me, all things are possible. So he would let the rich man know that even though it may be hard for you to make it, but it's possible with me. Hallelujah. The next thing, as I begin to continue to examine Gideon, I notice in scripture, verse 2, he said, the people that are with thee are too many. Yeah. What is he telling us in this day and hour? You know what God is telling you and I? If we want to do the work of God, amen, he letting us know it does not take a lot of people. It don't take a lot of us. You mean to tell me it don't take a lot of us? See, Mother Marshall, what gets us, see, Many of us have grown up this way right here. This is how we're thinking. I'm finna tell you how we think. There's strength in numbers. I remember when I was in school, you know, y'all, many of y'all know that I used to be one of them, you know, fighters and everything. But one reason why I could be bad and everything and I could fight and everything, 
because I had a cousin and I had a few more that, you know, no matter what mother, whether I was right or wrong, guess what they were going to do? If they seen me getting beat up or they seen somebody that looked like they were winning, they were going to come in and they were going to join because that was what? Strict in number. We used to call it double teaming, triple teaming, amen. That's what we used to call it back in the day, amen. So, see, many of us grew up with the idea that their strength in number, which is true in many cases, amen. In many cases, there's strength in numbers. The more people you have, the better chance you will be successful. And we feel, look, many of us, we want to be a part of what? A large group trying to accomplish something. And see, God, even in all his wisdom, look what he told Gilead. He said, guess what? The reason why you can't be large in everything, he said, because Israel will vault themselves against me, saying, my own hands have saved me. See, God knows something about us, amen. We are quick to take credit for things that God do, amen. So God in his ultimate wisdom, amen, sometimes has to fix the level, the uh, playing field where you and I, it's not that many of us. But then I got something else to tell y'all. See, because many of us like to be a part of these large things, amen, these large groups. But I have found out something about being part of a large group. What I found out being part of a large group, even though the group is large, there's only a few people really doing the work. <laughs> have y'all found that to be true? The group may be large, but there's only a few people that's really working. Hey Amen. We think about the, even the church. I heard mother, I heard uh, sister neighbors over there talking about mission field. Let's just be honest. Mission should be for all of us. But let's be honest, amen. It's only a few. Amen. Doing missions. Amen. Only a few. But we know that God has called all of us in the Great Commission. Amen. So our passage, it challenged our very thoughts and ideas. See, because many of us, we have been taught, and I agree, amen, many times, amen, they'll tell you there's safety in numbers, there's strength in numbers, amen, and we agree many times that is true. But God said not for him. Not in all situations when it comes to him, amen. Because here we see, amen, immediately he tell Gideon, to go and tell the old people who are fearful they can go on home. And the Bible tells us that 22,000 left. 22,000 left. In other words, let us know, amen, his ways and his thoughts are not ours. That's why you and I in 2023, we can't put God in a box. We can't put God in a box, amen. But we must remember it does not take a lot of people to do the work of uh, the Lord. And then we got this next group. Amen. Where he tests them. This group right here, I call, you know, they're pretty small. But I call this group in the church the Holy Didn't Die group. <laughs> You're going to say, Pastor Boone, why you call them the Holy Didn't Die group? Amen. Y'all going to see why I call them the Holy Didn't Die. Amen. Because, see, the test was for to go down to the pond and go get some water and they were going to be tested and that small group or the holy didn't die group they got down on their knees and see when they were down on their knees like this right here they couldn't keep their eyes on the enemy and why is that so important in this day and hour because the bible tells us be sober be diligent because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may defile. In other words, you and I, we ain't got time, amen, to be looking down, amen. We need to keep our eyes on the adversary. That's why the Bible tells you and I, we need to pray and we need to watch, amen. We don't want to get caught up, amen, and end up missing out on the Lord. Then we see, amen, this number was decreased all the way down 
to 300. Amen. And I believe this group, amen, was that group, amen, that were keeping their eyes on the enemy. They weren't so holy, amen, that they felt that they could take the eyes off their enemy, amen. But they were doing like the Bible said, watch and pray that ye do not enter into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. What I'm really trying to tell to us, amen, in this day and hour, amen, we don't have to be the smartest, amen, because, see, we're living in a day and hour where many people want you and I to know the Bible back and forward. But I'm coming to let you know, you don't have to know every scripture in the Bible to do the work of the Lord. Did God save you? That's all you need to know. He said by what? The blood of the lamb and by the words of your testimony, that's how we overcome. That's why we try to get people in the church to tell people about your testimony. Amen. You're going to overcome, amen, but somebody else out there, amen, is going to be able to overcome because somebody else can think and say, guess what, God? I just received hope, God. If you did it for that person, God, your word tell me you have no respect of person, dear God. And I know my situation may be a little bit worse than theirs, God. But if you did it for them, because you have no respect of person, God, I believe you'll do it for me. And this is why, amen, in the old church, amen, we used to testify on Sunday morning, amen, on Friday night, amen. Whenever we came to the church, we would testify because we understood the importance of testifying. Amen. Amen. People would get up and tell you how good God been to them. Amen. And you just hearing that testimony would give you hope in your situation. Amen. And many of us in this day and hour, we need hope. And this is why I say, amen, do we really believe God has called us to do a work for him? If we believe God has called us to do a work for him, share your testimony. Amen. I know, amen, some people are ashamed, amen, but I'd be like, guess what? God, all that I went through, I'm no longer ashamed of it, amen. I'm not ashamed of it because that became my testimony. Amen. Because I'm not that person anymore. Amen. I'm not that person. I'm a child of the living God. So you and I, we don't have to be the smartest person. We don't have to have a college degree. We don't have to have a high school diploma. Amen. We don't have to go to seminary. Amen. To be used by God. It's okay. I'm not going to knock education. Amen. It's okay if you go. But everybody won't have the opportunity to go. And then you got to be careful when you go to these schools. Amen. Because a lot of these folks that are teaching, don't say it, Pastor. Because you finna mess them up, Pastor. <laughs> a lot of these people that are teaching don't even call God as their Lord and Savior. Many of them will tell you that they don't even believe what they're teaching. Amen. But because it's paying the bills, they are teaching. Amen. And that's what you and I have to understand. Amen. I need somebody who's going to teach me something that has the anointing behind it. Because it's the anointing that destroys the yokes. Amen. I need somebody who's anointed. Amen. Whether you got a high school diploma or not, do you have the anointing? I don't care because you got a doctoral degree from the best seminary in America. I don't care about that. If you ain't got no anointing, don't you come here and lay your hands on me. I need somebody with the anointing. I need somebody who can reach heaven. I need somebody who prayers can be heard. Hallelujah. So you don't have to be the smartest one, amen. And then the Bible lets us know. And this is what I'm trying to get us in the church to be honest and to be real. Because this is my prayer when I pray to God. I say, God, let me be real. Because see, when we look at Gideon, the Bible went on to tell us some things about Gideon. And it tells us, amen, 
when we look. But if thou fear to go down, go down with Pharaoh, Furu, thy servant, down to the host. In other words, it seemed as though Gideon was not the bravest person. We don't have to be the bravest person, see, but in the church, amen, we quick to quote this scripture here. God has not given us what? The spirit of what? Fear. But a power, love, and of a sound mind. But when you be honest with yourself, amen, sometimes because we don't know the outcome, sometimes because we don't know the situation, sometimes because we don't know the full picture, amen, guess what, amen? Fear do come in. And this is what happened to Gideon. And this is why God told him, say, guess what? I see you're not really fully trusting me the way you should be because you don't know the outcome of this situation. I'd have told you, amen, way back in the sixth chapter when I called you and I sent the angel, amen, that I was going to deliver my people through you, amen. But guess what? Gideon, you can't see it because guess what? Fear. But he said, guess what? I need you to go down to the camp. Because when you go down to the camp, when you sit there, amen, somebody going to be telling that way had a dream. And the dream is going to tell you. It going to build up your confidence. That's why I said, guess what? We have, look, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Because when he went down there, even though he may have been shaking, amen, he found out, amen, when the man began to tell the dream and how God began to let him know that ain't been nobody but that fella Gideon who's about to come in, amen, and God is going to deliver his people, amen, through Gideon. When he heard that, amen, he was in his soundness of mind. He need to be in his soundness of mind. Why he needed to be in his sound as a man? Because see, now God was ready to do the work. Amen. God was ready to do the work. Amen. And he had to trust and believe God. Because God was about to do something that was, guess what? It was not conventional. What do I mean? It wasn't conventional. God was about to send him the work without weapons. What crazy person going to walk without weapons? You mean to tell me there's no person in their right mind? Because I served in the military for 22 years, and mother ain't nobody. Yeah, I said ain't nobody going to put me on a plane and tell me that I'm finna go somewhere and fight a war. Give me a weapon. What have you lost your man? But this is what happened to Gideon. He didn't have what I said, conventional weapons. Because he did have a weapon, see. He did have one, but there were some pictures, you know, in old trumpet. But you and I, man, we think about weapons of war, man. We think about guns. We think about tanks. We think about things that shoot ammunition and things, amen. But look at God. See, and this is what God is telling you and I. In this day and hour, amen, if you and I believe that God has a call and has chosen us to do a work, we have to be just like Gideon. We have to be willing and obedient. See, because he was willing. Because God knew that he was, you know, God knew he was a little shaken. Amen. And God knows us. And this is why we need to be real. Stop trying to lie to people and things. Amen. We need to be real because God sees and knows everything. And God knows our heart. And Gideon, amen, he could see. And when God told him that if he was fearful, you go down there. What did he do? He obeyed God. Mm -hmm. But see, the Bible said you and I must be willing and obedient to eat the good of the land. How many of us in here know it's better to obey God amen. than to give a 
a sacrifice. That's a hard thing in the church, brother. How many of us know that it is better to obey God than give a sacrifice? We got people in this day and hour are more obedient to the church of God in Christ, to their local church, than God. And we have to understand God wants us to be a willing and obedient to him. Amen. We have to be willing and obedient to God. We have to trust and be faithful in this day and hour to do the work of the Lord. And this is what I see in Gideon. He trusted God. I don't know what I put in that situation, but the Bible tells us what he was facing. It said, don't folk would like grasshoppers. Sand of the sea, that's a lot of folks. Yeah. <laughs> and at the end of the day, God, you're going to give me 300 folks. 300 folks. But you notice, Gideon trusted God. He trusted God that for 300 people, God, you're going to give us this city. You're going to give us. Because we've been held down for seven years. That's what the Bible said. They had been in captivity for seven years because they were disobedient. Mm -hmm. And now God was coming to deliver them. So God want you and I to trust him and to put our faith in him. That's why we quote scriptures like trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding and acknowledge him in all his way and he shall direct your path. Because we want the people of God, amen, to understand no matter what we're facing in this day and hour, God wants us to trust him. And we're doing the work for the Lord. Many times, let's just be honest, God doesn't give us the full picture. But when I came to our, God didn't give me the full picture. Because when I moved to our, I moved here for two years. I'm going to be honest with you. I moved here for two years. Kicking and fighting, mother. <laughs> That's right. To show y'all what kicking and fighting, amen. I dropped Evangelist Boone off hey. in June. And I was like, hey, I'm going on back to Atlanta. Amen. And I'll come see you in January, but I'm not planning on leaving Atlanta until January. It was Evangelist Boone that, guess what, started putting in resumes for me to find, get a job here in an hour. Because, see, I was kicking and scratching. I'm not coming to hour. We came down here on a visit, and I looked, I was like, man, I've never been to a place like this, God. I can't even see that many of us, God. And you mean to tell me, because you know in Atlanta, we everywhere. And you send me somewhere like that? And then I said, first of all, you know, God, I'm comfortable in my own church. Amen. Because guess what? I got a pastor. Amen. I'm like the assistant pastor. Amen. I'm okay in the jurisdiction. People know me in the jurisdiction. Amen. The bishop can call me to do, you know, the audio or whatever, you know. So, I don't need to go nowhere. I'm okay here. But then I, you know, I always had in my mind, even before I came here, that God had called me to pastor. And even in Atlanta, they knew that. And whenever someone would leave or something like that, we had people that was in the, in the military, they would have to go on deployment. My pastor at the time would send me over there to speak. If somebody got sick, he would send me. Then we had one amen, two people, one passed and another one went to another denomination. But the church stayed in the church of God in Christ. He said, I need you to go up there. And say, I, I, I went up there with him. I was obedient, mother. <laughs> I went up there about two hours away. But then guess what? I said, oh, pastor, no, I can't go up there. I don't think this for me. They said, well, you can go down by Columbus, Georgia. 
love, joy, and peace. I said, no, I don't think so, Pastor. I'm okay right here. But then I came to Iowa. And when I came to Iowa, we was in a great ministry. Amen. A great ministry. Amen. A ministry that God blessed me and my wife. Amen. To be a part of. Amen. And it was predominant. Amen. Caucasian ministry. And to show you that God has favor on you. And I couldn't understand it at the time, mother. These folks didn't know me from nowhere. But I went there, mother, and the next thing I knew, guess what they said? We want you to be a part of the finance committee. We want you to handle the finance. I said, y'all want me what? In a Caucasian church, y'all trust me to handle your finances? Y'all trust me to count money going to back off and ain't nobody going to follow me? Y'all trust me to do that? But God was letting me know, amen, there's something, there's somebody seeing you, amen. And then God just began to deal with my spirit. As happy as me and Evangelist Boone was, my spirit became trouble, mother. And when it became trouble, amen, Evangelist Boone didn't understand and I didn't understand. I drove down here because I was looking for a coach at church and I drove around and I ended up here. And I told Evangelist Boone, because you know the music is different. I told Evangelist Boone, I said, guess what? I got to go get my coaching fix. <laughs> I needed a coaching fix. <laughs> amen. So I came because when we came here, amen, we had made up in our mind, amen, that coaching, we was gonna try not to be in coaching anymore. Amen, we had made up in our mind that we wasn't gonna do it, amen. But see, that's why I say you can't put God in a box, mm -hmm. amen. And when we came, amen, we came and we visited, amen. And we thank God for it because we came and I got my coaching fix. And after I got my coaching fix here, amen, I went over to another coaching church. But this time they wasn't having church, they was having a meeting. So I didn't get my coaching fix. And for months, I did not need a coaching fix, but my spirit was troubling. I, I couldn't understand and I was praying, God, what is going on? And God told me, say, I need you to get up and go back to Mount Olive. Uh -huh. And when I came back to Mount Olive, God had already started putting some things in place. I didn't know. I came here and I was just happy. They told me, look, got me in trouble. Yeah, y'all got me in trouble. Y'all didn't even know that. <laughs> y'all got me in trouble because they came, mother, I came down, I visited them a few times, and they asked me to minister. And I preach. And all of a sudden, I get a call from the bishop. He was the auxiliary bishop at the time. Is you little fella, where you come from? And everything, and I had to say, I said, oh, I'm Elder Boone, I, you know, I got my license, and you know, this and that, so I had to, you know, make sure. I said, them folks that got me in trouble down there, <laughs> and everything. But do you know it all? And it's what I said, when God has a work for you to do, God orchestrated some things, amen. And we know, amen, today, amen, almost 10 years now, God has allowed me to be the pastor here at Mount Island Church of God in Christ. But I didn't come here for that. And that's why I said we got to trust God and allow God to honor your steps. And the last thing is we're closing. People who do not let fear keep them from doing the work of the Lord. If we ever gonna do the work of the Lord, we have to overcome fear. Amen. We have to overcome fear. Hallelujah. We have to, sometimes we have to begin to quote scriptures. And that's why I love the Bible so much. Amen. Because see, sometimes when we fear for amen, and sometimes when God has called us to do a work, sometimes we have to be able to go back and say, look, great is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Because do you know sometimes when I'm up here preaching, do you know some of y'all look so mean? 
I have to be like Jeremiah when God called Jeremiah, amen. Said, don't look at the people's faces, amen. Yeah. <laughs> amen. <laughs> I'd be like, Lord, some of you look like you know, you just feel a limit, amen. But I'm just letting you know, and I have to be reach back and say, great is he that's in me. Then he that's in the world, amen. Or I have to look back and say, I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. And then sometimes y'all don't even know, amen, when I'm down, amen. Y'all hear me come to the pulpit and sometimes I ask y'all to do this with me. I ask you to what? Magnify the Lord with me. Amen. Because I need y'all to help magnify the Lord. In other words, I'm asking y'all to help me to make God bigger than my work problem. To help me to make God bigger than my situation. Amen. That's what I have to do. Amen. Because, amen, a few months ago, y'all had to really help me. Amen. When I got that call, amen, that my mom was gone. Amen. I had to ask y'all, amen, help me to magnify the Lord. Amen. Help me. Because I don't know how I'm going to be able to But I realized I had to go. But I asked y'all, amen, because right now, I can't even pray, God. I can't even pray. The only thing I can do is just say thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me to have a same mother. Amen. And even while I was thinking it, do you know my eyes was full of tears? My heart was broken. And I wanted to ask God why. I wanted to ask him why. But the only thing I could do, the only thing I could think of, Mother Griffin, was to magnify. God, I need you to be better than this situation. Because God, I'm going to ask God, I'm going to have to learn. Amen. I'm going to have to learn how to not make a daily call, God. To not have that person on first Sunday when I called on first Sunday because she used to speak at that church on first Sunday. Me and her would go back and forth. Mama, what you preached on today? And she'll say, Earl, what you preached on today? Amen. And I, but now, oh, standing all over the place. God want to use us and parents God want us to bring our children to Sunday school so we don't even understand the magnitude of the things that our children are dealing with. Our children are going through so much at the school. School just started and they already putting our little kids eight years old for bringing guns to school. Students are already being expelled for being disrespectful to teachers. See, we have to understand the reason why all this is going on because God has told us in the church, train up a child in the way that they should go. That when they old, they won't depart from it. He has not only told us, he wants us to also to encourage our children and say, guess what? Do you know the first promise that God made when he created those 10 commandments? He said the first one with a promise is that you honor your mother and father and you will have long life. We got to be able to encourage our children and tell them this. Because the world is telling them you can do anything. It ain't nothing going to happen. But they don't know. They don't get a chance to choose the consequence. God has a work for us to do in this day and hour. And we have to make up in our mind 
that God can use us. And I thank God for the elder saints. I thank God for y'all mothers. Because these mothers' testimony is still that they're not tired yet. But you know what it is time for us in the church? It's time for us to tell these mothers, these elders, that guess what? We don't expect you every time the door open, mother, with Griffin. We don't expect you to be here, mother. Because you have served the Lord faithful during your generation. Some of us young folks, it's time for us to step up. We don't expect for Mother Griffin every time we open the door to teach Sunday school. We don't expect Pastor Boo to teach Sunday school. Why am I saying that? Because all of us I see you raise your hand. Say you believe you got a work to do. We got Sister Daddy. Try to be faithful. Come down here, and I'm gonna pray. She come down here and try to teach our children Sunday school. But you know the problem that Sister Debbie had? In Sister Debbie class, she got off from five or four year old all the way up to 10. Why? Because we said we got a work to do. But if we got a work to do, why you can't come down here and teach? Why you can't come down here and teach our children? we got to go into, guess what? A place that you and I is not going to go into. Come many of us going to be sleeping in our grave, waiting for the trumpet to sound to get up to meet the Lord in the air. But our children, they need to know the word of God. And we got to get serious about this thing because we're losing too many of our children. The present system is full. The graveyard is full of our children. When we gonna get serious in the church? I know it's okay, we love to come and shout. But when we gonna get serious about God's work? This is the generation for today and the generation for tomorrow. Look what the world is teaching them. That they can be with anybody. You're born a boy, but you don't have to identify yourself with a boy. You're born a girl, you don't have to identify yourself as a girl. This is the world. When the Bible tells us over there in Genesis, the very first book said God created what? Male and female. And we want to. I'm going to let you go. But we said we got a work to do. I'm trying to encourage us. I'm trying to stir up that fire. We say, man, it's like fire shut up in our bones. So if it's like fire shut up in our bones, we should be willing to do what? Work. Grace is an eternal father. You see each and every one of us here, dear God. And your word came today, dear God to remind us, dear God, and to encourage us, dear God, that you have a work for us to do. And not only that you have a work, dear God, but it came to remind us, dear God, that you have chosen us for this season and for this time, dear God. And God, those gifts, those talents that you have given us, dear God, they are to be used at your house to glorify you, dear God. Someone, dear God, that don't know you. They're watching us, dear God. They're watching our tardiness, dear God. They're watching how we communicate with one another, dear God. They're watching everything that we do, dear God. And God, we need to even come to you now and ask you to forgive us, dear God. You forgive us, dear God. And dear God, because you know our heart. And God, we don't ever want to bring shame to your name. We want those that are looking at our lives to know, God, that we are your servant, dear God. And God, that our lives glorify you. You said we are the light of the world. 
in this day and hour. Just as you were the light, Jesus, we are now that light because you're on the inside of us. And you help us, help us to be about your business. Even now, God, my prayer is that you stir up every gift in the house. Stir it up, God. Stir it up. Because you know, God, we need you. And God, there may be one that's online this morning. A one that's in the house don't know yet that the Lord is Savior, dear God. That one, we're going to ask you to repeat after you, after me. Let the Lord know, say, Lord, I'm a sinner. See, that's the first thing we have to do. We have to let God know, confess, let him know that we are sinner. Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner, God. Now, God, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. See, I believe your word, God. I believe that you sent Jesus. I believe that Jesus shed his blood on Calvary for the remission of my sins. I believe he's your only son. I believe that he rose on the third day. And I believe he's seated at your right side, making intercession for me. You have said that, amen. And you have asked God to forgive you. Now I want you to thank God for forgiving you of your sin. Tell him thank you for forgiving you. And then make this declaration that you are saved. Say, thank you, God, that I'm saved. And now that you have made that declaration, I want you now to ask God to give you or to fill you with his Holy Ghost. It's a gift. You don't have to work for it, amen. It's a gift. Amen. Ask him to fill you with it. Because you need power in this day and hour. God, we thank you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord as we get ready to go home. Amen. Amen. I truly thank God. I thank God for his presence. I thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. And for our offering, amen, you know, amen, as you depart. Amen. We're going to ask you to drop your offering in the offering receptor at the back door. But once again, we thank those from the Moors, amen, for coming and visiting us. Thank God for Mother Marshall. Thank God for each and every one of you. So now, amen, we know that God has a work for us to do. We should find ourselves what? Doing it. Because the Bible said whatever we find our hands to do, we should do it what? Unto the Lord. Not unto the other boom, but unto the Lord. Amen. 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 So with that, amen, I believe uh, Evangelist Boom was supposed to clear up. I'm going to let her clear up and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to pray God's blessing over the offering and then we're going to be dismissed. From 13th through the 16th of September, 2023, our jurisdiction will have a jurisdictional women's convention. And at that convention, we will be honoring Mother Beats for 10 years of service as the jurisdictional supervisor of women. And on that 16th, that Saturday, the last day, will be the Jurisdictional Women's Department's luncheon. And there are tickets available to go to attend that luncheon, which are $50 per ticket. If you would like to attend that luncheon, see me and I can get you a ticket. Um, but we want to all be there to support our uh, supervisor of women from the 13th of September through the 16th of September is the Jurisdictional Women's Convention. In the morning. More to come. Amen. 
So we truly thank God. And I know, amen, next weekend, amen, is something for the women, amen. I believe on this schedule, amen, there was something for the women next weekend. So please govern yourself, amen, to the announcements, amen. So this time we're going to ask you to stand, amen. And we thank God for our children, amen. Thank God for you, amen, playing those instruments, Amen. Sometimes I think I should come over there and join y'all. Amen. Because y'all know I got a heart of a child. <laughs> Amen. Just love children. Amen. But we're going to pray God's blessing. Amen. Or with our offering, we're going to pray. Amen. And God. Amen. Give our visitors a safe journey. Amen. Back to the morns. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for this day, dear God. And we thank you, dear God. For your blessing, dear God, these women to come, dear God, and to see about us here in Mount Island, dear God. And God, we thank you for their presence, their fellowship, their love, dear God. And God, we even ask you now, dear God, that you, dear God, would bless them to have a safe trip home, dear God. And you would encamp your angels round about them, dear God, and keep them from all hurt, harm, and danger, dear God. But most of all, dear God, we ask in you, dear God, that you would continue, dear God, to let them serve you, dear God, with all of their heart, dear God, mind and soul, dear God. And God, we ask you that you would take them higher in you, dear God, and we thank you for it, dear God. Now, God, we ask you that you would bless the offering, dear God, bless the hands they give, dear God. Bless them a hundredfold, dear God, and let this offering be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, dear God. We give you thanks in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. What I say unto one, I say unto all. Watch, Watch pray, pray, live holy, and do the work of the Lord.